there. They've got extensive plans about that, which they very often demonstrate to the press. Um, I'm going to interrupt myself and everybody else for a second because one of our senior producers, Mark Obenhaus, uh, is on the phone and he saw the incident. Mark, do you hear me? I do indeed, Peter. Go ahead. Um, well, I was leaving my house uh, to go to work at, and I walked down the street to go to the subway. I was at the corner of Franklin and West Broadway and as I was approaching the subway, a tremendous roar uh, uh, went over my head and, and I looked up immediately and it was a plane um, and much lower than I've ever seen a plane in lower Manhattan and it was a large plane I couldn't <coughs> identify it as anything specific except that it was a commercial jet certainly um, and it, it then it, my eyes followed it because this is approximately 15 blocks from the World Trade Center and it, it just slammed right into it and was completely engulfed by the by the building it was extraordinary no, no wings flew off nothing like that it just went directly in creating this sort of cavern like hole and and suddenly then big big uh flames started protruding from it and then of course smoke and 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 then debris started just catapulting and of course the area that we're in there's a great deal of foot traffic and people are just approaching and beginning to just gasp at uh, and just the sight of the building itself, even if they hadn't seen it, uh, the actual incident, the actual impact, just the sight of this huge building in engulfed in flame with this massive cavernous hole in the side of it. And we stood there, I can't tell you the amount of time, I, I would estimate it's about 15 minutes, and, uh, and, and of course there's all kinds of services coming down, fire department and so forth, and then suddenly from my vantage point, which would be north of the building, the, sec the, the far tower suddenly explodes in flame uh, uh, yet again, a similar kind of, a, of an event. And I now see, I've, I've run down the street to my home where I have the television on, and I saw the, that that, too, was another airplane. It, it, from our vantage point, you couldn't tell what exactly it was that hit the, hit the, hit the second tower, but it was a, a similar, seemingly almost like bomb blast uh, and with flames and debris protruding wildly from from the building. Mark, let me ask you a couple of more specific questions. You now confirmed for us, I think, that it was the first attack on the tower that you saw. Yes. What, what direction was the aircraft coming from? It was coming from the north. It was coming it, from the north down over Manhattan itself? Yes. Um, it, well, it would have been flying roughly over the west side. Um, I'm, uh, I'm on, as I say, West Broadway, which is probably a quarter mile from the river. Um, so it was on a direct path north, from the north, uh, into the uh, into the north tower. Do you remember whether it had two engines, three engines, or um, four I engines? I do not. It was very quick. It, it struck me, uh, you know, the the, the, the profile, the, the the body of the plane um, was of such scale that I immediately identified it as a commercial jet. I didn't, couldn't. It happened so quickly. I couldn't tell whether it had windows on the side or what. It, I mean, it could very well have been a, some sort of a of a uh, transport plane. But it was a large, large plane. Um, as opposed to occasionally down here, you do see smaller uh, prop planes or uh, smaller aviation uh, stuff that uh, flies around here, sometimes doing movies and things like that. But uh, in all my years down here, and I've lived down here for about 20 years within uh, walking distance easily of the building, I've never heard anything like this. And that's, what, that's why I, I just immediately glanced up and just followed the, the track of this sound and this huge plane that was swooping over my head. Could you see any markings on it whatsoever? No, I did not. It was too, too quick. I, 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 I can't uh, give you any kind of identifying help on, do, on, on what, it, what it was. Do you remember what color it was? Was it, was I, it? My impression was, uh, was that it had a tan uh, coloration to it. Mm -hmm. However, uh, the sun it was very low in the horizon, and I think uh, it kind of orange. And it may have been simply the color of the sun reflecting off a silver um, exterior. I, I really am not sure of that. Okay, Mark, anything else? What's the, what's the, uh, what's the mood in the environment oh, down there at the I moment? As if it's I not mean, hard to imagine. And everyone who, who glimpses it close up, it's quite different seeing it from the ground than on, on these television pictures that I'm now looking at because it's, it's close to you and you, you see what the impact must have been like and you see the kind of devastation that uh, has, has uh, incurred by, by the buildings and it's just uh, it's, it's, uh, it's frightening is uh, perhaps even too mild a word okay. um, it's absolutely uh, just a, a horrible horrible sight it, 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 it reminds you of the worst kind of effects mm. in movies that 
you know, you're reassured watching a movie that it's an effect, but this is not. Well, Mark, uh, you and I are supposed to have a meeting not long from now. Uh, we'd prefer you to go and work the story, if you would, and call us back as soon I as will you indeed. can. I will indeed. Many thanks. Mark Obenhaus, one of our senior producers on the phone who saw the incident, describes it as a large plane, not sure what the color was, not sure the number of engines it had, which in his mind, he's a very experienced reporter, reflects the speed and surprise with which this aircraft, this is the first one we're talking about now, just before 9 o'clock, approached the World Trade Towers from the north, um, causing the first huge gap in the building. And, and Mark describes the, the plane being engulfed in some respects by the building. Didn't see wings fall off, saw it go absolutely, uh, uh, totally almost as he described it, into the building itself. And we now have had one of the enormous difficulties about terrorism, everybody knows, is that you, you, you almost immediately get a claim of responsibility and you may get several and people's suspicions get ramped up given the obvious nature of people who they think are in, and, or know are involved in terrorism around the world. There has been a claim of responsibility, according to the Raiders News Agency, uh, made to Abu Dhabi television uh, in the Persian Gulf from uh, something called the Palestinian DFLP. Uh, the Palestinian DFLP is something called the Democratic Front for the Liberation of Palestine. Um, it has been for many, many years one of the uh, most militant of the Palestinian organizations, um, has been involved in violence before, has been involved in, uh, in, in other actions before, and it is the first organization to claim responsibility for this, though we have to caution you in all the obvious ways that before the day is over, um, there may be any number of people who claim responsibility. Uh, the White House, of course, is, 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 has leapt to the forefront of people's concern this morning, and there is a plane circling the White House at the moment, uh, and they're clearing the grounds there. Um, we have, that's a report which may be misleading in that it may presume an attack, whereas we just discovered a moment ago that what we had with an additional airplane in New York airspace was a security operation. I think probably most Americans know that there is no building in the country uh, which is, which has heavily defended, I shouldn't say deemed secure, but um, a battery of anti-aircraft missiles uh, on the top of the White House itself. Uh, we've had an incident, as you know, in the past, uh, several years ago, where a small aircraft landed in the White House, uh, in the White House garden, and the pilot, uh, um, mentally deranged, as I recall at the time, uh, was killed. Um, but the White House is certainly, certainly been very heavily defended, and this plane circling the White House adds to the trauma that people are feeling today, but we have no idea precisely what that means. John Miller, you're listening. Uh, the scene is still in some degree of chaos, but the police have uh, set up a major mobilization point uh, just outside the building, and they've set up a tactical mobilization point. The major mobilization point is uh, for the responding units involved in the rescue. The tactical one is actually an armed mobilization point for security outside the World Trade Center now. Thanks very much. Let's go to the White House. Claire Shipman is on the phone. Claire, what's that we're looking at? Well, that's what we're trying to figure out right now. All we know is it's a gigantic plume of smoke coming from behind the old executive office building, and we're told that the White House itself, the West Wing, at the very least, is being evacuated, that our personnel from there are being asked to leave. We've sent people um, running over there to try to find out what it is, but we don't know yet. Now, the old executive office building is to the slightly to the west and a fraction to the south. So we are looking southwest from a camera just across Lafayette Park, which is north of the White House. The White House is to the left side, out of your picture. Maybe even the cameraman could give us some appreciation. But you have no idea? Was that an explosion? Did you hear we anything? Did not, we did not hear it. In fact, we were trying to figure out from the White House what security precautions they were taking around the White House. and in the wake of the um, apparent attacks on the World Trade Center, and we suddenly just saw the smoke rising from behind the old executive office building. We have people on their way there now, but it's, it's like nothing uh, I've ever seen. I mean, we've never seen that kind of smoke coming from, from anything that uh, uh, would ordinarily occur here. I must also tell you, Claire, I think if you think about what's behind the, the EOB there, you're really down uh, in pretty open area. It doesn't look like a place where a building would be on fire. No, that's right, although there are a number of buildings just behind the old executive office building on G Street that 
could potentially be on fire, but nothing you would necessarily think of as a target. Um, apparently, we're also Claire, being let me interrupt you for a second. We now have fire confirmed at the Pentagon. I've John McCrethy at the Pentagon can hear me. John, please get in touch immediately if you can, and brief us in there. John McCrethy has actually been evacuated from the Pentagon, and parts of the Pentagon are indeed being evacuated.